My name is Chris Gethin, and what I aim to bring to you is inspiration, motivation from clients, everything that will allow you to evolve as a human being. Hello, everyone. Chris Gethin here, and we are in beautiful Tijuana, Mexico. You can see the beach in the background. We are in the IV lounge. I've just finished my IV. Sunshine is recording this. She is hooked up to an IV at the moment. I wish I could record this, actually. It's phenomenal. But we are here with Mr. David Trude. What's up, my All man? Right, Chris. All A-OK. -okay. Feel great, actually, after, you know, a week of stem cells and biohacking and all that sort of stuff. Now, I know that you've been in the stem cell industry for quite a while, even before you joined uh, with CPI. Now, I know that you played college football uh, and you have a background when it comes to stem cells. Is that how you got into stem cells because of college football and injuries? How did you fall into this? I mean... Honestly, it just happened by pure luck. Um, so I didn't have a medical background. I did not have any formal medical training. I actually had a sales and marketing background. And in 2018, uh, a company that was based in Medellin, Colombia had reached out to me. The corporate office was in Phoenix, Arizona, and they wanted to talk to me about a sales position. At the time, I was working in the remodeling kind of construction world. I was an outside sales rep. I was doing really well financially, and I had full autonomy of my schedule. So for me, I never thought I would go back into an office. And when they actually contacted me about having that first conversation, my response was, no, thanks. I'm good. I guess divine intervention, right? Sparked me to look into them a little bit further. And I'll never forget, I was sitting at home that night and I was looking at the job posting and I realized, oh, it was a medical opportunity kind of piqued my interest a little bit. The thing that gotten my foot in the door with them to go have that conversation is when I looked up their location, their corporate office was literally across the street from my townhome community. And I mean, like you and I right now are sitting in my townhome. So that building that we see right across the street here from the window, across four lanes of traffic, that was their corporate office. So I was like, I'd be an idiot not to at least entertain a conversation. And things kind of snowballed from there. Interesting. And what was it that sparked that interest further from you to say, okay, I'm going to give up my career that is very comfortable. It's got me to where I, where I want to be. And now I'm going to completely shift focus still in sales, but now in a medical field. So it's kind of two things. I mean, for me, being that I grew up very involved in athletics and sports, like I've always followed kind of what's going on. And when I realized that they were a stem cell company at that time, the only thing that I knew was Peyton Manning did this on his neck when he had the neck surgery. Kobe Bryant did it when he tore his Achilles tendon. Tiger Woods, he did it for his back. So I knew there was something special here because these high profile, you know, icons of sport are traveling internationally to do this. So the other side of this was for me personally, I wasn't satisfied with what I was doing. I was making good money. I was comfortable. I could go do whatever I want. But financially, I wasn't stressed. I was 26 years old, no wife, no kids, making 80 grand a year. You know, it's a pretty comfortable lifestyle. But for me, a couple of years leading up to that, there would be moments in my life where I'd be in the car and I'd be driving down the road and I would get frustrated because I knew internally that I had this personality, I had this charisma, and I had the skill set to always just kind of make things happen or get things done. And for me, I always had this like underlying desire to do something more. I guess that self-realization, my skill set and my destiny was bigger than where I was at right now. I knew I'm supposed to be doing something greater than what I'm doing now, but I didn't know what it was, how to get there. So it's just kind of like this crossroads of life. And so for me, this opportunity came along and, and I'd always kind of wanted to do something that was impactful to people, right? When you sell somebody a car, that's cool. Like me, I bought a new Mustang, right? I always wanted a Mustang since I was a little kid. At the end of the day, it's a car. It's got four wheels, an engine, and a coat of paint. As long as it's got air conditioner living, living in Phoenix, Arizona at the time, I'm good. You know, it, it doesn't change my life. So for me, I never found that satisfaction in any career that I had prior. And then I got into the stem cell industry, and it became a matter of changing people's lives. And then I found that satisfaction there. And what were the, you know, the clientele that you were and working with mostly? Is it like anti-aging, preventative medicine or injury? Uh, you know, they're dealing with injuries and now they want to kind of avoid surgery. What, what is the demographic that you've been working with? So really, it's a little bit of everything. There's really kind of three set 
categories of stem cell patient that are kind of the bread and butter of your operation. And this was the same both here at CPI stem cells and also the same in Columbia. You know, it really boils down to one bulk of an audience that wants to do stem cell for the biohacking purposes, do it for the anti-aging purposes, right? People that are looking to stay young, stay youthful, you know, keep themselves in the game. You know, whether it's a 60-year-old guy who wants to continue to play in his softball league, or it's a 33-year-old guy who goes, hey, I've seen degeneration happen with people in my life, and I want to slow that down as much as possible and kind of stay ahead of the curve. That's one bucket. The other bucket is orthopedic injury. You know, a lot of people, especially in America, they only know stem cell because they see doctors are doing it for shoulders, for knees, you know, just for orthopedic joints. Because that's really the only thing that's allowed in the United States. And even that's at a very, very minimal level. So you do get a lot of traction from people that are looking at stem cell for those orthopedic injections. A lot of people that are looking to avoid knee replacement surgery, avoid doing surgical aspects on shoulder joints, elbows, things like that. That would kind of be the second bucket. The third bucket, and I think the area that really offers the fastest level of overall body response is the spine and disc injury. Now, so many people across the world have neck problems. They have lower back problems, whether it's due to their job, you know, in terms of what they do, they may have a physical demanding job. They may bend and twist and do all these things. It could be, you know, somebody like yourself who they did motocross. You're very big into the fitness industry, or maybe it's somebody like me where my neck got destroyed from playing football and taking hits. But all of us kind of run into that at some point in life. You know, those spine and disc injections are game changers for anybody that does them. I mean, usually the patient will see a response within 14 days. And I'm not talking a minimal response. I'm talking like night and day differences where they're no longer living a life of pain. So that's kind of the third bucket. Stem cell can be used to treat like autoimmune conditions, things like that, traumatic brain injury, but those seem to be a little bit farther and few between. It really is anti-aging, orthopedic injury, spine and disc is kind of the bread and butter of this industry. Right. Okay. Interesting. And then when it comes to like, you know, spine and disc, you know, people are dealing with issues, inflammation, injury, maybe they want to avoid surgery. How long does it take for an individual? I'm assuming that you have different type of fast responders, slow responders, but is there an average timeline where someone goes, you know what, I can really feel the benefits here after say four weeks or six months? Yeah. Well, like it really can be different for everybody. It's all, you know, this is, this is microbiology at the finest level, right? I mean, we're talking cellular performance and those cells having to acclimate with your existing body and everybody's a little bit different. I mean, you and I are two completely different body types. You know, the way that you train and you take care of your body is going to be a little bit different than how I take care of my body or, you know, people that I know that don't take care of their body at all. They just live every day, you know? So everybody's a little bit different with the spine and disc injury stuff. It is very common that within, for most patients, three to seven days, they wake up and they go from a life of pain in the neck every day, pain in the lower back every day. And they can wake up within seven days on average, most people, not all, but they can wake up and go, oh my gosh, I have no pain today. It happened with me. I sat in this chair right here in front of us and I did a hundred million stem cells just via an IV application. I didn't even do injections into the disc in my neck. And I always have this problem with chronic inflammation in my neck. I would get this pain right here at the base of my skull or on top of my C1 area, and it would shoot these pains down my neck in between the, the shoulder blades. I'd get the tension headaches. And on a daily basis, Chris, I for the last nine years of my life up until receiving stem cells, I was taking realistically two to 3,000 milligrams of Tylenol, ibuprofen, something every day just to function. I would wake up in the morning. I would take three 500 milligram tablets of extra strength Tylenol to start my day just to head to work. You know, in the afternoon, I kept a I keep a bottle in my backpack. I might take a couple more. You know, if I'm at home watching television, you know, especially most of us as men, we don't typically lounge on the couch with great posture. And I can feel my neck getting stiff and I might get up and take a couple more. And this was every day for almost a decade. And I'm only 33. The moment that I did stem cells, I'll never forget. You know, obviously we're here in Tijuana. I live across the border in San Diego. And I was sitting in the border traffic waiting to cross the border. And it, it's a rough day of traffic, Chris. It probably took me about two hours to cross. But I'll never forget sitting there. And my neck had been pretty rough that week. 
And it felt like somebody took a needle and popped the balloon in the back of my neck. And I could literally just feel the inflammation subside. Since that day, 85 to 90 days ago, I've had no pain, none. And I, and I don't mean like I've had minimal pain. I mean, like I have not taken a single Tylenol, ibuprofen, anything other than just the other day I had a headache, but that was not due to neck pain. I mean, that was just, you know, every now and then you get a headache and that's common, like with a lot of our patients. Now imagine those patients that have pinched nerves, they have, you know, herniated discs, bulging discs, things like that. When that neurosurgeon goes in and injects that disc, that injection immediately takes that flattened disc space and it elevates it. So what happens a lot of times is we create that proper spacing back in between those vertebrae and it alleviates those impingements on those nerve endings. So it's very common for a patient to wake up two or three days post injection. Once that initial inflammation is worn off, they're pain free because now that nerve's not trapped anymore. They don't have the, the bulging disc pressing on their spinal cord. Everything is back in alignment and everything is normal. Then from there, those stem cells work to rebuild that damaged disc. Yeah, that's that's fascinating because speaking to Ray, obviously top wrestler here with the WWE, he, I, when I spoke to him this morning, he said he feels since it's been two days, no. he's already feeling the alleviation of the pain in his back, in his shoulder. So, you know, it goes to show that some people can be very fast responders. Now, this is a, a common question and I did ask Scotty Nelson this as well, but I want to ask you because I get this question You've seen the posts as well, and we'll, we'll follow up on a couple of uh, questions in the posts that people had commented on. But when people have this injection, you know, and I'm guessing it all depends on the severity of the injury, the inflammation, and what they go back to in their normal lives. Is this something that people would have to have done on a regular basis, or is it a one and done? It really just depends on the person. If you're a professional athlete, a bodybuilder, anybody who is going to continue to put miles on the tires is the analogy that I like to use, then yes. I mean, you might have to look at doing this again in the future, especially a guy like a Rey Mysterio, right? Yeah. Or his son, Dominic, who's only 25 years old, you know, two years into, in, into this wrestling business. You know, those individuals, they go out and they take bumps and bruises that the human body is not meant to take. And they do that five days a week. You know, what people don't realize about that world is not only is it the in-ring athleticism and performance and the toll that that takes on your body, but these guys work out every single day. And they have to travel all and the time as well. They travel. It's the miles in the car, sitting in, you know, in a seat. It's getting on airplanes. So for those athletes, those guys literally don't take days off. Mm. It's not like the NFL where I do my 20-week season, you know, counting preseason and all that, Right. And then I get to rest for a few months. It's not like Major League Baseball where we play six months. Then I get four or five months to rest before spring training starts or hockey or the NBA. Their world is every single day. As long as your body can maintain it, you're not injured, meaning you have to come off the television or you have to come off the road. So for guys like that or any professional athlete that we deal with, they're going to continue to push their body at the highest level of performance that they can. Injury is inevitable degeneration of joints and you know the cartilage in a knee a shoulder an elbow it's inevitable those individuals will certainly probably look at doing stem cell again for a guy like me at 33 years old where i just want to be healthy and i just want to take care of my body and i don't want to be like my dad who's in his 60s and you know knees are shot he's overweight you know back hurt. he just had a hip replacement surgery recently like i don't want to be that guy so for me doing stem cells now is taking care of my issues currently in the state that they are so that I'm not looking at 10 years from now doing a knee surgery, a spinal fusion on my neck, because that obviously being my issue. So for normal guys like me, this very well could be a one and done. Everybody's situation is different, Chris. We have some patients that come in and they have tremendous responses to the treatment and they only need to do this once. There are other people that they've waited so long to come in and do this that now at this point, that disc is so bad in their lower back that we will set an expectation for them. Hey, Chris, your back is really bad. We recommend that you do it this time, but probably come back in 90 days and let's inject it again. You know, we don't do anything cookie cutter here. Everything is custom to the patient. It's not standalone packages. It's not this many stem cells for this. Every single patient gets a one-on-one -on -one consultation with myself first 
or my other patient advocates. And we determine, you know, number one, are you a candidate for stem cell? We set proper expectations for you. We make sure that you're willing to travel to Tijuana, Mexico to do treatment. As you know, you went through this process with me. Yeah. And, you know, I try to do a very good job of setting all expectations, but really diving into your medical history to find out what it is that you have going on. And then what I do, Chris, is I take those notes. I share that with the medical doctor. So he already has a complete blueprint of what your problems are so that during his time with you and that doctor medical consultation call, he can dive into that at a much deeper level and really put together a custom treatment protocol specifically for you. And I know you obviously went through this process. Um, your wife, Sybil, went through this process. And both of you guys had drastically different treatment protocols. I mean, you're a little bit more beat up than she is. And, uh, and that's how we treat every patient. Yeah. And what I really liked is that, of course, you go in depth. You have to take the x-rays. You have to take the MRIs. You have to take, you know, even before you go into the hyperbaric oxygen, which is more like a submarine here, <laughs> you have to take, uh, you know, the chest x-rays to ensure that your lungs are at, at perfect capacity to take something like that. And what I really liked as well, when we were actually being injected by the stem cells, we're using an ultrasound. So I'm actually watching the needle go specifically into my supraspinatus or the area of concern by the surgeon. So, and I, from what I've been told, the surgeon is a lot of the time used to injecting very vascular areas such as cancerous tumors. Correct. So he has to be very, very specific and precise with that role. So, of course, he brings that to the table when working on us as well. Yes. Now, I mentioned to you a while back on the phone that a friend of mine said, well, I can get umbilical stem cells in the U.S. and I can get them really cheap. Why would I go there? So, of course, I gave him my answer based on your expertise as well, why somewhere like this is going to be very unique compared to what you're going to get in the U.S. Can you explain the differences there? Yeah, I mean, that's the, the number one question that we get day in, day out. I mean, you look at any CPI, social media posts, and the number one question is always, where do the stem cells come from, right? And people, because of South Park... <laughs> There's a little bit of a notion of where stem cells come from. It is not true, people. Um, I am a South Park fan, so I know the episode very well. But no, it, it, these stem cells do not come from aborted fetuses or anything like that. And originally, 20 plus years ago, that is how stem cells were kind of discovered in America and you know some of the ways that they were being harvested. It's very outdated technology. Since then, Chris, we've moved far beyond that from a scientific standpoint where we found that the most pure stem cell what's called the adult mesenchymal cell can be extracted from what's called Wharton's jelly, which is located inside the umbilical cord. Stem cells can also be harvested from your own body. Now, Chris, with you, we might have a little bit of a problem getting that. You don't have much body fat on you, but we can extract body fat. That's called adipose tissue. That's something that we don't really do here. It's a little bit of an invasive process. You don't get the same number of cells. And then they can also do a bone marrow tap, which is very painful. If you ever had an epidural or anything like that, you probably know what some of that pain is like, but they extract bone marrow from the bone itself that usually will ex give the scientists roughly 300 to 350,000 cells. And then they can take that into a laboratory environment and incubate it. The problem with that is when you pull your body's own cells, just because they're your own cells, there's no way to guarantee that they're efficient. You know, if you have some type of autoimmune issue or some type of genetic disorder at a cellular level, those cells can be damaged. Yeah, or if you've gone through a lot of trauma yourself through injuries, you go to a cash point machine, you've got this bank balance, you're extracting cash from there all the time, so you're left with a little amount Correct. of stem cells, hence why you're not recovering. Right, anymore. and you know, one of the guys that I work with is WWE Hall of Famer Kevin Nash, and Kevin Nash in an interview said, why would I want to take my own 60-year-old cells out and put them back into my body that already have 60 years of wear and tear when I can take the freshest, most pure form of stem cell, that's going to be the most aggressive for healing my body and put that in. And, you know, with the, the umbilical cord stem cells, here at CPI, the way that it works is at the time of a natural birth, Chris, they will ask the mother, ma'am, would you like to donate the umbilical cord for the use of science and medicine? This is at the time of a natural, healthy birth. These do not come from C-sections because the umbilical cord can typically get damaged during the process of cutting. These do not come from aborted fetuses, placenta, anything like that. It's only a natural birth, healthy, happy baby, happy mom. They go home together. They donate the umbilical cord for the use of science and medicine in the way that most international facilities operate. Let's say, for example, Sybil donated hers. 
we would cryogenically freeze and store half of the stem cell that we would extract from the umbilical cord for the use of the mother and the father in the event that there's any type of medical emergency, they want to use it as a later date, whatever the process may be. The other half of the stem cell then goes to the laboratory environment. Everything goes through the proper safety checks and balances, which it doesn't always in America, and that's a big difference. But we're checking for any bloodborne pathogens, anything that can be contaminating or hazardous to the patient, any molecular imbalance. And the way that things work in here in Mexico, as a lot of people don't realize that Mexico is very, very strict about that testing process. So we put the umbilical cord before any cells are even extracted from it. It goes through stage one, stage two, and stage three testing. The testing is unanimous at all three stages. So it's the exact same test performed at different variable markers. And that testing result at stage one, at stage two, and stage three have to come back with unanimous testing results. If one test varies from any of the others, Chris, that umbilical cord is immediately quarantined and we do not extract any cells from it. So we're making sure before we even start working with the cell at its root level, that we've done all the proper checks and balances to make sure that for you, a patient, everything is, is perfect. That's awesome. That's awesome. The type of stem cell is different to what you're going to get in the US and the efficacy is going to be different. And what about like the storage? Like I, you, I understand like if I'm getting stem cells here, they're pretty, pretty fresh. You have your own compound pharmacy. If I'm getting the NAD, it's within two weeks of that being created. How does that work in the US compared to here? Do you know? Yeah. So <laughs> during my career during COVID, I left the previous facility that I was at in Medellin, which was an international clinic. And then I moved to Orlando, Florida in literally the height of the pandemic to help an American doctor establish a stem cell clinic. And what he was purchasing, Chris, he was purchasing an umbilical cord stem cell product, but it was a pre-manufactured product. As an American doctor, he is not allowed to take the umbilical cord at its root level do the proper scientific testing, then extract the cells, take them into a laboratory environment, incubate them to take a million cells to a hundred million to treat a guy like you. So, yeah. so harvest them. Basically. Correct. Yeah. You can't harvest. You can't do any laboratory work in America. They do not allow it. It is not allowed in America at all. What can be done is if you are a MD, a PhD at any level in the United States, and this is, this is great insight for people that are out there. This doctor, Chris, that asked me to come out work for me, he was a chiropractor. Chiropractor cracks necks and cracks backs and deals with realignment of, of the body, right? What's their expertise on molecular level biology and science? Probably pretty minimal. In the United States, as long as you have an MD or a PhD at any standpoint, you can pick up the phone, you can call one of these manufacturing facilities, and you can say, hi, my name is Dr. Truitt. Chris, I would like to purchase stem cells from you guys. You're going to put me through a couple steps to verify that my medical license is in fact correct and intact. And then a day later, I can be purchasing a pre-manufactured vial stem cell product. It comes in one cc or two cc increments. And typically the average rule of thumb is a million cells per cc. So if you purchase or if I purchase one cc, that's a million cells. In America, typically those injections are one cc into an orthopedic joint, maybe two cc's. So you're getting one to two million cells. You know, the other problem that you run into with this is you asked about storage. In order for stem cells to stay live and active, they have to be cryogenically frozen at approximately negative 44 degrees. Chris, you've been to a lot of doctor's offices over your life. How many cryogenic freezers have you ever seen? Probably haven't come across any. I have literally seen facilities where they take that vial of stem cells, they open up the freezer, and they put those stem cells in the same freezer that's 18 degrees, 15 to 18 degrees Fahrenheit on average, same place where you and I would put an ice pack, lunch, you know, whatever you got that day. That can't ensure that the stem cells stay alive and active. So unfortunately, what happens a lot of times in America with stem cell, and this is why there's so much imbalance of does it work, doesn't it work, is because sometimes people get an injection but because of the low number of stem cells that they're getting and because the stem cells might not have been stored properly, they could be getting completely dead cells and they see no results. And now they spent five to $7,000 for that knee injection and got nothing out of it. For other people, they spend that amount and they do see results. You know, it's, it's case by case. But to give people perspective, when you do stem cell internationally, you know you're getting the cells straight from the laboratory, 
scientifically they can test them and show you that they are live and active you're getting the lost most pure form of cell that's out there and then more importantly rather than getting one to two million cells into my knee i'm getting 40 million chris that could be the equivalent of 20 to 40 injections in the united states that normally cost you five to seven grand on average stateside so it's just it's a night and day difference in the science what can be done on our home turf versus what can't and then you know really it's just that handling process and the medical expertise of who's treating you yeah interesting and what, what i think is fascinating there is that like you said you're having an efficacious dosage but the price difference is huge when you told me what it would cost me here and then when I priced that up with a couple of other people that I know within the US, it was over double, yeah. over double, yet you don't even know what you're really getting. Not shitting on anybody over there, obviously. And somebody actually said to me, they contacted me and that I know this uh, top doctor in the US and said, hey, I can get it you for free. You know, you just got to do some promotion and you do it for free. And I'm like, you know what? I am going to take good four to six weeks off, you know, from heavy training. Training is my therapy. I am not going to go through all this, the time, the effort, that investment in my time within myself, if I cannot guarantee it. Right. So I told this person, look, I really appreciate that, but I would prefer to actually pay and come down here and invest in my own health, knowing that that will be a good investment for my future after six weeks. Of course, I can train a little bit during this time, but I'll increase the intensity to by about 10, 15% every week, dependent on how I feel. But at the moment, I feel really comfortable. I don't have any pain, don't have any swelling. Obviously, everybody's a little bit different, but I feel that I've received this uh, very, very well. But the other thing that I noticed that is very unique here in Tijuana compared to what I've seen internationally as well, is that you also have all these modalities, these biohacks, the PEMF, the ozone of the blood, the NAD, the hyperbaric oxygen chamber, the infrared sauna. Have you noticed, like you've worked for another company overseas, have you seen that anywhere around the world where you have all these modalities that follow your stem cell treatments? Not at this level. People ask me all the time, they go, what's the differences between Colombia versus what you're doing here in Tijuana? Because obviously I have had that experience with two different clinics. In Colombia, we had a hyperbaric chamber, but it was just the individual one man tube. It can't get to the deepest level of, of oxygen. When I try to visually explain to somebody here, the hyperbaric chamber, the only way I know how to explain it, Chris, is I tell them, you've seen a train like going down the tracks? And they go, yeah. I go, you know the tanker car that carries like oil, gas, any liquid? They go, yeah. I go, picture that in your mind, but instead of it being black, it's white. And it's about 35% of the size. And they go, what? I'm like, yes, that's the hyperbaric chamber. We can fit four patients in that thing. And it can go to the deepest oxygenation levels of the human body can handle the individual solo clear tubes can't do that nad plus you know helps tremendously with cognitive brain function that's something it helps as an anti-inflammatory with the body as well i didn't have the ability to offer that i didn't have the ability to offer ozone therapy we didn't have an infrared sauna we didn't have a pmf machine in colombia it was stem cell injections iv you could do the myers cocktail and you know that was and hyperbaric that was pretty much the treatment protocol so here it's much more dialed in it's much more adapt to the to the human body and each patient you know the other great thing about cellular performance institute or cpi stem cells we're a part of the chips of cancer hospital this hospital has been in business for 40 years these are american patients mostly that are told in america chris you have stage three or stage four cancer and unfortunately we can't do anything for you and you're given an expiration date you know, i asked our owner one day i have nothing to do with the cancer side of our business but i was at dinner with our head owner uh ed clay and i asked him i said hey ed over 40 years, what's been the response rate? The response rate over that 40-year period, Chris, for 100% of people that are probably told your time is limited, to 70% positive response rate to cancer. Like that's astronomically huge, right? For some people, that means they've been told they have three months to live and they extended their life a year, two years, maybe three years. For other people, that means full remission. They beat cancer. You know, how do you put a price on that? Like, how do you even, I mean, I got chills. like just, just thinking about that right now. Like, how do you even put that into perspective for somebody? The great thing about CPI is we're all in the same hospital. So when we get a patient here that has a rare autoimmune disease, that has something that's just outside of the norm of 
uh, a shoulder, a lower back, something like that. Our doctors can rely on 40 years of advanced therapies and techniques and treatments that we can't do just across that border over there. And they can incorporate that into that patient's stem cell treatment as well. So here, the possibilities are really unlimited. I mean, we can really treat people from the root cause of what they're dealing with, and we can customize it however we need to from a medical perspective to ensure that they're going to see some type of result. That's phenomenal. That's awesome. And speaking of hyperbaric oxygen, I think my time has come up to get to, like, I thought it looked like a submarine <laughs> when I first saw it. I was like, it's like a submarine. It's phenomenal. But I really, really appreciate your time here. The hospitality, and as you mentioned, the hospital has been awesome. The food has been absolutely fantastic, all organic, all fresh as well, to ensure that our bodies are purified and in a perfect state to kind of accept these stem cells, stabilize and mobilize these stem cells and have them localized in the area where they should be. Absolutely. But if people wanted to ask you questions, if people wanted to reach out to you, how can they contact you? Yeah, so... I actually, I, so since you and I work together, Chris, I like to work with people that I work with, right? So for you, I know you're going to get a lot of questions. You're going to get a lot of emails, text messages, things like that. If anybody wants to reach out to me, they can email me personally. My email is david.truitt, T-R-U-I-T-T at C-P-I stem cells.com to make it very easy for people. If they have Instagram, you can even DM me on Instagram. It's at Iowa Hawks fan zero six. And I'm sure Chris will tag that as well. But, you know, I was going through your, your post yesterday and I saw 198 comments at two o'clock in the morning, Chris, I was scrolling through responding to all those comments. So I noticed that um, zoning. I want to try to make sure that we can educate as many people as possible. And my job is to help them make an informed decision, whether that's to come to CPI stem cells, maybe it's go somewhere else. My job first and foremost is to tell you truthful answers and lead you down a path of making your own decision uh, and making sure that you do that from an educated standpoint. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for your time here, brother. Hospitality has been awesome. And we'll put the links and the contact details uh, below in the show notes there. But if you do have any other questions for myself or David, please put them below. Thank you very much, everybody. We are out. Thanks, guys. Thank you ever so much for listening. My name is Chris Gethin, and I am out.